and I love story and Mm -hmm. I'm excited to be on your podcast, which celebrates and investigates story and its power. And, and, you know, so, so telling stories has has been something that I've always done with music anyway, as a composer, scoring films, Mm -hmm. or, um, I did an audio book, uh, last year. Welcome to Story Power, a bi-monthly podcast where my guests and I geek out about the stories we're passionate about in all different genres, styles, and formats. My name is Lucinda Sage Midgordon, and I started this podcast during the summer of 2020 at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. As I watched the reaction of my friends, family, and social media circle, I noticed that many people turn to stories for comfort and help in making sense of the craziness going on around them. My goal was to do the same for my listeners, but as I chatted with my guests throughout the first year, I discovered that their personal stories were the most fascinating thing about each episode. Neil Gaiman says, Fairy tales are more than true, not because they tell us that dragons exist but because they tell us that dragons can be beaten. I now know that sharing our experiences with others helps us defeat our own dragons. It is our stories that connect us to one another. Let's see what wisdom today's guest has to share with us. My guest today is Jonathan Byram, and when we hooked up on Zoom, we just started chatting, and we were having so much fun talking about his family name and my family names that and other things that I almost forgot to start recording. So eventually I did, and uh, there was a lot more that we chatted about before I welcomed him to the show, but I've cut all of that out because I wanted you to hear about all of the creative endeavors that Jonathan is involved in. He is such a great guy, and I want you to hear his story, not my story so much. So here we are, episode 32. Jonathan, I haven't even yeah. welcomed you to the show yet. Oh, well, you know, it's just it's just so easy to talk to you. And um, who needs pleasantry? Who needs the, the pleasantries, you know? <laughs> well, I suppose that's true. Except I do want to say that this is going to be episode 32. Cool. And congratulations on 32 episodes. I I know I can't hardly believe it. And of course, I started off with friends and family and my students, coaches, college colleagues. <laughs> That's how I started. And then I don't know how Podmatch found me, but they sent me an email, and I'm so excited because I have now I have several. Very uh, good, cool. like you, wonderful people to interview. So yeah, I'm just so excited. Well, I'm, I'm honored to be on the list. Uh, yeah, Podmatch found me similarly and uh i was like oh just give this a shot let's see what what the world of the internet opens up for i know well you know normally i don't i go no i'm not gonna (laughs) (laughs) stay away from me that definitely (laughs) because i'm a real introvert but it just felt right and when i was talking to my first guest amy vasterling she was the episode before you she said she belongs to other other groups like Podmatch, but they haven't been as okay. haven't hooked her up with as many interesting people. So, yeah. so I was like, "Oh, good! I'm so glad." Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I have to shout out. We have to shout out to Podmatch and say, yeah, thank, thank you, Podmatch. Yes, really. really. <laughs> so I was listening to a couple of your now your the name of your podcast is Nature Narratives, and they're all really really short. And I only mm-hmm. listened to a couple of them today. I apologize. I've been so busy since we got back from vacation, getting classes ready and so on and so forth that I didn't got a lot. Didn't listen today uh, till today, but they're so short. And I was wondering, how did you come up with the idea to combine music, story, science, and nature? How did you come up with that idea? That is a fantastic question. Where to begin? Um, I am. It, well, okay, I'll tell you the story of the first episode. Okay. The first episode was inspired by looking out the window. I was in Chicago at the time in Ooh, a, yeah. uh, like a third story mm-hmm. room. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't live in Chicago, but I was there temporarily. I was actually chasing a girl uh-huh. who lived in Chicago. Uh, that girl is now my wife. So Yay. it all worked out. It was uh, a very worthwhile trip to Chicago. Anyway, so I had this room to rent. And, and so snow and uh, winter are just so wonderful to me because I'm in Los Angeles and, and it's mm-hmm. all just, you know, 75 and pleasant or really hot pretty much all year round. So mm-hmm. I was I was looking out the window and I was working on, uh, I'm a musician, I'm a composer, so I was just working on projects and, um, and just mm-hmm. kind of looked out the window and it was a, it had snowed just the night before, but it was a sunny day. And so the snow on the roof that I could see outside of my window, there was a, there was a smaller building right next to me, started melting throughout the day. So I saw this snow kind of disappear until it was just a damp rooftop the shingles were just sort of this mm-hmm. dark, you know, damp uh, color. And then and then that finally turned into this huge blanket of steam because it was just the, the last remnants of the water. And so all of a sudden it was just this vapor was just whipping and whirling off of the top of the roof. And I saw it and I just thought, wow, that those little water molecules, they were snow last night. And then mm-hmm. they became water as they melted. And then, and now they're turning into this vapor. I'm, I'm seeing the, the water cycle or I'm seeing, you know, the, the transformation of the elements uh, into their different forms right before my eyes. And then it's whirling up to the sky. I was like, where is it going next? And I just thought that could be a really cool adventure story. Yes. And I, so I just, I stopped what I was doing and I just started writing out the adventure story of a water molecule starting from falling as snow and then transforming into mist and then swirling and doing loop-de-loops and cartwheels up to the sky and then forming itself into a new formation, becoming a cloud. And just that captured my imagination uh, in the middle of a work day. I stopped everything, wrote that story, and, and then I did nothing with it for at least a year. But I just had, but I had this idea, this could be something, this could, I don't know what it could be, but I just wanted to tell more stories like that. And mm-hmm. eventually I had other thoughts like, oh, I could, I could do the next part of the water cycle. I could do like, I don't know, tadpoles or I could do the formation of a star. One of the episodes uh, that I've already done is on lightning, how lightning is formed. And then another one is on how the Grand Canyon formed over, you know, mm-hmm. millennia. So, and then I'm, I'm a composer by trade and, and, you know, I'm freelance. And so sometimes... I really don't have a lot to do <laughs> when it's <laughs> when it's a low month, you know. Um, you know, it comes and goes, and and there's this there's this idea to just like make your own work, right? Um, right. Actors talk about this a lot. They, oh they, yeah. They make their own work. They make a short film, or mm-hmm. or um, you can self publish now as a writer. Mm-hmm. All these things. And I just thought, well, maybe this is something I could I could score these stories. And it would just give me something to do musically and who knows what it might turn into. And so that's how the music component came along. Cause that's, that's mm-hmm. really, you know, if I'm, that's really by trade what I do. And, and I love story and mm-hmm. I'm excited to be on your podcast, which celebrates and investigates story and its power. And, and, you know, so, so telling stories has been something that I've always done with music anyway, as a composer, scoring right. films, mm-hmm. or um, I did an audio book uh, last year. So that's, that's kind of, that's kind of how it all started. And once, once COVID hit, I was, it was actually before COVID hit, actually, I made my first episode and oh. then started launching it. And then when COVID hit, I was like, all right, I'm just going to do this consistently, like once a month. And I've got, uh, I don't have 32. I haven't caught up to <laughs> the story power yet, but I have uh, 25 episodes now. Oh, that's cool. That I've kept up with, uh, yeah, on a monthly yeah. basis. And and nature is just, so like why nature? Nature is just so incredible. It's just amazing. And so just thinking about it in terms of these short snippets uh, and I'm used to short form in a lot of ways. I've, I, I was raised as a, as, uh, I came up kind of as a songwriter. That was my main focus was just doing songs. I love telling stories in song form. So these are like little nature songs, but they're, mm-hmm. but they're short stories. And, you know, I loved, I, I, I didn't particularly love learning about science in school because it was textbooks and it was, you know, right. remember mm-hmm. this fact or that fact. But 
as I was started to do as I started to do these, I realized, okay, I need to actually research this a little bit and make sure I actually know what I'm talking about. So as I did that and turned it into a thing that I could understand that was focusing on what was amazing about it. And that's mm-hmm. our log line, always be amazed for mm-hmm. the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, that's been sort of the guiding star is what, like what's amazing about any of these phenomena and, right. and how can I share it in a, in a story form. So it's a wonderful distraction from my normal work life. And I also get to just kind of make music without any rules for it. Um, mm-hmm. So that's, 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 the, that's the narrative of nature narratives. <laughs> and they're really, really short. So you can do them. I imagine you can do them and edit them pretty quickly. My, some of mine are really long and it takes me a long time to, I've tried to keep them around an hour, but sometimes when my sister and I are talking about movies, we go on forever. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have to, my yeah, husband, I can imagine. My husband reminded me, um, you know, you should probably keep those shorter. Oh, yeah. Okay. So oh, th- that, that brings up a good point. Spousal input uh, is super important. My <laughs> wife is a trained teacher. I didn't tell you this. My wife's also a, a teacher. Oh, no, I read about her. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Her, uh, her name is Eva, and she is a very talented teacher, uh, has a master's of education, mm-hmm. um, and is certified out here in California. And then she's also a Montessori certified teacher mm-hmm. um, for elementary, lower elementary in the Montessori. Um, curriculum and so I we we look at these before I record them together and go oh is this is this accessible is this does this make mm-hmm. sense you know is it and she keeps me on on target with some grammar stuff <laughs> and um, <laughs> and then she also develops uh, some curricular activities I hate to use the word worksheets but um, let's call them uh, fun supplemental yeah ac- activities that that pair with the uh, Mm-hmm. The episodes. And so those are great. And anyway, so yeah, it's good to have that spousal input. I'm glad to hear you have some of the mm-hmm. same support, it sounds like, at home. Yes. Well, my husband's a, a a potter in his heart. He's a potter first, but his job is a graphic artist. He's been a graphic artist for, I don't way back when he was in college and 40 years. It's 40 years since he graduated this year from college. So he's been doing that graphic thing for a long, long, long time. And he's a Mac geek. He's been using the Mac for graphics since the eighties. So except at the job that he's doing now, they don't let him use a Mac. He has to use a Wintel machine. He calls it a Wintel. Oh. Um, oh, so sad. I know. <laughs> I'm, I know. I'm with him. I, I was, my dad got a Mac early on and, uh, and I remember using it as a kid and just thinking it was just the coolest thing. And I know. Um, yeah. yeah. I've been with, been have I've had Mac computers ever since. Yeah. So we have Apple everywhere in our house. We have lots of devices. <laughs> He's helped me a lot when good I man. get yeah, man. when I get stuck on garage band like I didn't have music in the very beginning. I didn't have any intro outro music, you know. Yeah. And so he and I uh, over Christmas investigated the looping thing with garage band and and then I put together a little, you know, intro outro music amazing you did it yourself you made your yeah. own intro outro music mm-hmm. All yeah right I yourself select- composer credit on the on yeah. the podcast description well i suggest i i just went and found things that i like that i thought fit my you know my podcast yeah. so um but he's the one who helped me figure out how to even listen to the loops i didn't even know uh-huh. how to listen to the loops <laughs> and there are things that i still need to learn about garage band but it's been fun. And so hopefully when he retires soon, um, he's going to help me with my social media and he might take over the editing and, you know, you that go. kind of thing. Yeah, but, good. You're building your team. Yeah. But he also has his own blog post that he wants to do like mine. I do have a blog post that I published once a week. Okay. And so he wants to do one that's regular like that. I mean, I called myself a computer widow when he first started getting to know the Mac because he read all the books and all the magazines and all the articles. And did, now did he disappear down a Mac hole for a while. Oh, yeah. Yes. And he still listens to a bunch of Mac 
podcasts and, you know, that kind of stuff. So that's fun. Yeah. He, so he has those artistic and technical things going. Very nice. Yeah. That's a good combo. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. I love uh, Lucinda. We we both score our own podcasts. That's that's a pretty cool thing to have in common. Yeah, except I'm not really a very good musician, so I had to use. Hey, the with loops. Apple Loops, you can. There's <laughs> no limit. That's right. Yeah, really. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, I I have to take a tip from you though and make my podcasts shorter, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but but I get to talking with my guests, and it's like we- yeah, well, it's long. It, yeah, that's what you you want to get. Uh, your, yours is an interview format, and it's mm-hmm. uh, that's what's so wonderful about podcasts is that there's no limit on it. You know, we don't have to we don't have to do some quick and you know shallow thing. We can dig in, and and that's I mm-hmm. I listen to long podcasts. I've enjoyed um, some of your episodes. Yeah, it's great to do that, and yeah, mine is uh, I think mine is the strange one having a short short format. The hope is that they're useful to to parents and to teachers right. in the classroom. Mm-hmm. I've had mm-hmm. a middle school science teacher use it and mm-hmm. um, and I've had a parent uh, I, I have a I have a gallery on our website. Uh, the website is naturenarrativespodcast.com and there's a gallery where I post listeners artwork. I haven't I didn't look at that yet. It's um but yeah, yeah. It's, it's really sweet. There, someone did a, a drawing about of, of the lightning um, episode. And so oh, that's nice. up there on a, on a listener gallery, yeah. art gallery. Yeah. We're in the monsoon season now. So, Oh dear. Uh, so lightning is, you know, something that we see this time of year quite a bit. Mm. It hasn't rained for a couple of days, but, uh, it would be nice if it kept raining for at least another couple of weeks. Cause we're in a drought season, but yeah. Heal the land, please. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was thinking uh, a couple of things. One was your your voice is so soothing that if you made your podcast just a little bit longer, it would be something like the Stories on Calm, that app for sleeping. Oh, wow. Okay. Are you saying that my podcast is really boring, Lucinda? No, I'm not saying it's boring. I'm saying it's soothing. Okay, (laughs) good. (laughs) No, to be honest with you, I fall asleep to podcasts. Like I'll put a long interview podcast on and I'll just, I'll Mm -hmm. just day, I'll just doze off to it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you listen to Nature Narratives to go to sleep because of my soothing voice. You're welcome to. And anyway, it would make me very happy. <laughs> Except it's only, what, five minutes long or something. Just put them, You just put them on, on the playlist one after the other. That's 25 true. 25 of them. That's true. And just let it roll. That's right. Yes. And I wanted to say one other thing about your wife. When I first graduated from high school, I decided I did not want to go to college right away. So I got a job at, as a teacher's aide at a Montessori school. Oh, very nice. And I loved it. Uh, I was thinking about going ahead and doing, getting my certification for Montessori school, but then my life took other turns and I ended up with religious studies and theater and speech as my majors in my BA and then I got Mm -hmm. my master's in theater and so on and so forth. So Mm. yeah, but Montessori, that's just like sort of close to my heart because man, I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, we are believers. Uh, I I, I knew nothing, very little about it. Mm -hmm. Um, But when, when, yeah, when I went to Chicago and chased Mm -hmm. Eva, I got to know Montessori more and more through her, and now it's 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 like oh we just we have a nine month old baby boy. Oh wow! Um, so there's a lot of Montessori um, stuff that kind of influences parenting, or at least the way you the way you um, set up a home mm-hmm. or a room for for a baby. And yeah, she converted me. I'm I'm now mm-hmm. a full Montessori believer, and in fact. You know, talking about story, I don't know if you got. Did you, I wonder if you've got exposure to the uh, to the great stories that are part of the curriculum of elementary Montessori? They describe like the great story of the coming of the universe is one of the great stories. Oh wow! Um, that's a sort of a traditional part of the Montessori curriculum. Oh, fun. Um, and it's just this beautiful telling of the coming of the universe 
and it describes the Big Bang and the 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 you know the countless ages that go by, and then the the formation of of the Earth, and it just it like it dramatizes these mm-hmm. incredible scientific facts and theories and mm-hmm. um, uh, in into this really engaging story that that the teacher you know shares in class and. So I think uh, on the on the docket, I don't have it planned yet, but on the docket is I'm going to do as a nature narrative one of these uh, some of these Montessori great stories. Yeah, so Montessori, she Maria Montessori, she really knows the power of story in mm-hmm. in teaching, and mm-hmm. that's very much what nature narratives tries to do is to lean into the story elements mm-hmm. of sharing facts, but in a in a kind of dramatized story format and it's really gratifying it's fun it's fun to mm-hmm. make these well that might make history more engaging if it were more about story the story of absolutely this i mean that's barry and i watched uh ken burns barry's your about, husband uh, barry's my husband yeah okay. uh barry and i watched the pbs thing uh that ken burns did about the civil war and the thing that i loved about it was individual people's letters oh, home yeah. and you know wh- what they experienced when they were in battles and that's mm. the way we need to- I'm sure oh yeah. yeah but that's how we need to teach history is yeah this story of this person and or this group of people and yeah so that's why you know just the facts and figures mm. I, I've never been big on that. Yeah, they're hard to retain. It, it, it can be important and helpful, but it's, uh, yeah, it definitely misses a lot of the heart, the human, the mm-hmm. human heart in the, mm-hmm. in the history. Yeah. Yeah. And having taught at high school, you know, I taught American Lit, junior level, American Lit is juniors. And a lot of times the students would say, why do we have to learn this? This is what we learn in history class. And I'd say, well, yes, that's true. But the thing about this is that this is English class and somebody had to write down things about what happened in the Revolutionary War. Or one of the one of the ones that really got to the students was, I don't know if I'm going to say his name right. It's an account by a slave who became free. I can't mm. remember how he did it. His name is Oludo Equiano, I think is his name. Mm. And it was the his account of what happened on the ship in the middle passage. Oh my gosh. And that really stuck with the students because it was his story of right. what happened to him, you know? And so eventually they stopped fighting about it, but a ri- well, you know, good. good for you, Lucinda way to fight the good fight in the classroom. <laughs> That's, yeah. That I, I remember having that attitude thinking, Oh, well this is, this is English class. Why are we doing that? And um, mm-hmm. it's a really unfortunate thing that we bring to that, that I, uh, you know, that a lot of young kids bring young people bring to the, to the education experience. It's, un, it's unfortunate. And I, yeah, I hope uh, mm-hmm. we have more teachers like you who can help bridge the gap and broaden the, the idea of what you can learn in, in each class. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't teach high school anymore. I teach theater at the college, so that's always fun. That sounds like a blast. Yeah, the what acting show are you class. Working on right now, we're not working on a show right now. It'll probably be the second eight weeks. But acting class starts on Friday, and I started my dramatic structure class on Tuesday. So, and but the club is going to do some performing. I don't know what yet because we're just forming our club again. Yeah. So Dave's got something planned for Christmas for his theater workshop class, which is the performance class. Stay tuned. Wait and see. Mm -hmm. And then we have a new theater company in town. It's just a community theater company, but they took over some spaces in the old, the dying mall. And uh, yeah, <laughs> nothing, it's, nothing more depressing than a dying mall. Yeah. But thank goodness that the theater can come in and yeah. liven it up. 
Uh, yeah, I thought I thought it was a great idea. So they have two or, you know, they have an education space and they have a space for meetings and fundraiser, you know, dinner kinds of things. And then they have the theater space. So it was three different stores, fronts or something that they made into one, okay. one space for themselves. And, and uh, I'm really excited that to have them here because we've had fleeting groups, the town that CR is not, is not very large we do have Fort Huachuca, but you know that the, there's not a lot of theater here. If we want to go to theater, we have to go up to Tucson to the Arizona Theater Company, and that's two hours away from oh, our house. Mm. Yeah, it's a long we, pilgrimage for theater. So well, are, have they have they recruited Lucinda Sage Mid Gordon for their mm, for the company? No, you mean uh, for the Sierra Vista Community Theater? Yeah, are you gonna be are you gonna be involved at the? Uh, no. I'm too busy. I used to do acting and directing and so on and so forth. But since I started my, I'm also working on a novel, my second novel. So, which is going in fits and starts, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but yeah. So with the blog and the podcast, and since I'm the one man show with the podcast, it's just, and the teaching, it's just too much. And I, I feel kind of like I'm finished with that you know, a little sure, bit. Sure, I can understand that. That yeah. era of my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah. I want to hear more about your music that you do. Oh, sure. What do you want to know? You said something about writing for film or television or something? Yeah, I uh, I just did a little short film, actually. This was kind of wild. Uh, a director emailed me, and the email subject line was SOS Soundtrack. Oh, so I opened up the yes. Yeah, oh, is right. So I opened up the email, and it said, "We we need our our short film, eleven minute short film scored in twenty four hours. Are you available?" Are you oh my there? goodness! <laughs> and I said, "Yep, let's do it." <laughs> so, just hammered it out the next day, and of course, you know, this wasn't like you know soundscapey. Uh, simple piano. This was like, you know, high mythology, f- high fantasy mythology. So, you know, of course it has to oh, be right. like big orchestral type oh. stuff. And so I, my, my scoring, I don't know how much you know about, about film scoring, but, but I, my setup is, and, and most composers have this, they, we have like libraries and libraries of orchestral sounds mm-hmm. in the computer and can be triggered. You know, you, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, you're a, you're an Apple loops right expert now. Right with GarageBand, no, I, I would not call myself an expert, but yes, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. So anyway, it's the same idea. So I, anyway, I can with my with my keyboard, I can just basically create an orchestral, you know, piece. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I did for this. So that that takes a lot more time than than a you know a more simple kind of yeah. soundscapey or just piano score or something. Mm-hmm. But anyway, hammered it out in record time. It was an 11 minute film. He needed about nine and a half minutes of music, and it also. <laughs> <laughs> there was one scene where he needed some hip hop music, so I was I I laid down a uh, a beat for that for that little bit and yeah that was a blast I I do love a deadline so as as crazy as that was it was also really exhilarating you know being asked for something so quickly so that was fun so yeah so I do I do some work like that. I mentioned an audio book that I scored last year, yeah. um, and that was really that involved hours and hours of music. Uh, oh. Luckily, I had more than twenty four hours for that. That's good. Yeah, and let's see. More recently, I've been doing a lot of producing and orchestrating for other songwriters. Oh. Um, people who have you know come up with their own songs mm-hmm. and maybe they just kind of sing it and don't play. Or, or they just they have a song and it's recorded right now. I'm working on a musical that uh, that I can't share much about because of because it's in the works. But mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. but they're these beautiful songs and they're piano and vocal and amazing singers. And so around it, I'm I'm creating you know kind of lush orchestral storytelling again using the orchestra mm-hmm. around these uh, around these songs. So yeah, that's been that's been really nice to do recently. Yeah. And More. then uh, I do some I do some of my own songwriting as well and and release cool. music independently. This last Valentine's Day, I released my first full length album <sighs> and did a virtual concert for the launch. So that's out. Is it where is it available? 
Uh, it's available on Bandcamp at the moment, and coming up soon it'll be it'll be released on Spotify. But if you if you look up John Paul Byram, you should be able to find most of my music. Some of it's on Spotify already. Because I want to put that in the show notes. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. And also your Patreon. Yeah, there's a Patreon for Nature Narratives. Right. Uh, and in fact, you can go to naturenarrativespodcast.com slash join the adventure. And that's where you can sign up for the email list. For yeah. signing up on the email list, we uh, we give you the activity, the printable activities for each episode as they come out oh that's cool yeah so that's a great reason to join the uh to join the email list yeah we have fun with the emails uh and create a little rapport with our with our listeners there yeah and it's a great way to just have some things especially parents and homeschool parents and teachers to just have some some resources to Mm -hmm. kind of supplement the educational aspect and they're they're really Mm -hmm. fun yeah Yeah, well it's nature narratives podcast.com backslash join the adventure i yeah, I have your website. So I will put your website address. Great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah in I'd love there. to share this with, with more people. Yeah. So my husband and I have been thinking about doing Patreon for myself, but I don't think I'm ready to do that until I have a little more time to create some extra content. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. Yeah. I've been thinking about what I want to do for extra content. One of them is it's a great story. And the person actually who inspired me to do my own podcast, and I kind of model this one after her, is Ann Bogle with What Should I Read Next? Oh, cool. And she, she has this short form little podcast that she calls One Great Book. And I was thinking, oh, mine could be It's a Great Story. And it could, if they're hers or One Great Book are just like 10 minutes long. Mm-hmm. And she pulls a book off of her shelves and talks about it. And so oh, I, fun. and I thought, oh, I could do that with, like my favorite movies or you know yeah. television shows or or episodes of television shows so um, yeah that's a great idea to, so to go along with the long form episodes you'd, you'd release mm-hmm. special short something ones. short yeah something short and um, so I wouldn't talk to my sister because we always talk forever <laughs> <laughs> but you know we learned how to talk about movies with our dad because he would always ask us, so what did you think about the movie? Or what did you think about the story? Oh, I love that. So, yeah, because so when you leave a movie theater together, mm-hmm. you would ask that. Well, it was mostly on television because we lived in really small towns that didn't have movie theaters. Oh, okay. okay. And, uh, but, you know, we'd watch the Disney show when we were little and they'd uh-huh. have fun, you know, Disney movie things or right. documentaries or something. And so that's how I learned literary analysis was from oh, him, amazing. you know, because he'd keep asking questions and tell, oh, well, what do you think the story means? You know, <laughs> Right. So, yes, I love that. You know, I'll, sometimes I'll, I'll go to a movie with with friends or with a, with a, with a new group of people. I, I remember mm-hmm. doing this and, and then leaving the theater and and then kind of I expect to talk about the movie, but then. And then, like, it doesn't even come up with 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 certain people. They just kind of mm-hmm. talk about, I don't know, their day or you know mm-hmm. something totally boring, um, right. <laughs> or they just leave. And I'm, I'm I had the same experience actually leaving movie theaters uh, with my dad mm-hmm. and my brother uh, or my mom or whoever I was with. And but I, I especially remember my dad uh, kind of you know getting these conversations going about what we just saw mm-hmm. and we talk about it for a while. And my parents mm-hmm. are both performers, and so they, mm-hmm. they were always really interested in the in the acting or the or mm-hmm. you know who was in it. And mm-hmm. um, but yeah, we would talk about the story. So I love that your that your dad would instigate the same thing. I think that's just so worthwhile and and makes the yeah. whole experience of seeing a movie so much more fulfilling. Yeah, it was never okay to just say, "Oh yeah, it was great. It was great." Oh, he no, wouldn't let um, you get away with it. Oh, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Couldn't get away. And he was a machinist. He had dyslexia, but he knew how to read body language. And he was really a student of human nature. So oh, in a way, that was how he taught us, you know, about what it means to be a human being was those discussions with the movies. And Whoa, that's deep. Yeah, it was We just really went to great. a deep place. We did. You learned about human nature. Through stories, mm-hmm. what it means to be human, which is sort of why I started Story Power because that's I wanted to do more of that. Yeah, 
wanted to get down to what is it that makes us human and why do humans do what they do and you know that kind of thing yeah. awesome so what's your what's your dad's name his name is James Calvin Sage although he is he died in 2004 Calvin Sage god bless him and i miss him a lot oh. but i have a picture of him on the credenza in front oh, of perfect. me uh, underneath the picture of Gregory Peck, one of my favorite actors. So, all right, yeah, I'm, I'm all for Peck. that. He's amazing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, those two guys, and uh, of course, I also have a picture of my husband over there too. <gasps> oh, good. I'm glad he made he made the cut. He made the cut. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> we just celebrated our 41st anniversary. That's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. It's. It's kind of hard to believe that it's been what, that long. What's the secret? How do we do it? Tell the, tell the, tell the generation. Well, one thing for me is he makes me laugh. All right. So a little bit of humor goes a long way. He's fun. Yeah. And the other thing is I realized kind of early on that I was, I didn't love myself very much. So I was sort of sitting on the fence waiting for him to say, okay, I, I don't want to continue this relationship. Oh. And then I realized, oh, I was the one that needed to make the daily commitment. I had the uh, daily commitment to be, uh, to keep this relationship going. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I think that's served me well, not give up on the relationship every day, find something to make it grow or, you know, to find out something new about him or that's beautiful. And to be there for him. I don't know if that's the secret for everyone, but that's the secret for us. It sounds like a pretty good secret for others to, to adopt. <laughs> it sounds like that would, it sounds like it wouldn't hurt. Yes, really. I mean, I think some people don't realize you have to keep working at your relationship. It's not something that mm. happens in the beginning and then it just goes on its own, you know, it right on its own momentum. No, you have to keep working on it and working on it and working on it. Yeah. Because things change, yeah. as you know, now that you have a baby. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. We don't that's have right. children. Things are changing. And well, things still change. They still change. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we moved from Portland, Oregon to Arizona. Totally different ecosystem. Didn't have, we were silly and moved here and didn't have jobs. Although we had sold our house and gone on a trip around the world. So, uh, wow, fun. But, but his parents lived in the Phoenix area and my parents lived on the western side of Arizona. And my dad had heart problems. In fact, he had a heart, a, a second heart surgery right before we left on our trip. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, while we were gone, we said, you know, we should move to Arizona because our parents are getting older. And, and, and so now we're the ones that are left here. Nobody else is here. <laughs> All the other families gone. <laughs> yeah. But eventually we'll probably move closer to them. Yeah. And you can podcast from anywhere. Yes. And I can write my books from anywhere and I can blog from anywhere as long mm -hmm. as I've got a computer, which we have three or four in the house. So. Yeah, I heard. I heard you guys are really big into Apple. <laughs> we are. Well, they should be sponsoring your podcast. I know they should, especially since my husband knows practically everything. He has a little side business where he helps people with their Apple problems, you know, That's their fun. computer problems. Yeah. So I have to call him sometime. <laughs> yeah. He loves doing that. He loves helping people. He's a really good teacher, too. He's very patient. I'll be going, ah, I'm so angry. <laughs> and he'll go, just settle down. Okay. Go look at this thing. Click on that. Go do this. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you're a great team. Oh, we are. Yes. Well, it sounds like you and your wife are a great team too. Yeah, we've, we've, yes, we are. Um, I love doing stuff with her and it's so strange, you know, I, the pandemic, I was working at home normally mm -hmm. um, and my wife was teaching at school but then during the shutdown, she was teaching remotely. Mm -hmm. And then we had, we had our son mm -hmm. and she had her maternity leave. So she mm -hmm. was able to just focus on, on, you know, healing and, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and baby. And then she went back to work, but she was still doing it virtually. So 
the mm-hmm. three of us now have gotten to just be together constantly. Mm-hmm. And it's been a really big gift. It's been uh, wonderful, really. And you mentioned, you know, the work that needs to go into a marriage on an ongoing basis. We, just a little bit of self-disclosure, we, we, had, we had a pretty tough first year. Yeah, it was, it, it, it was a challenge to, to work through some stuff. Yeah, and, um, right. But we did it. We worked through the stuff. Like, neither of us had any thought of going anywhere. Um, so no matter how hard it got, it was just, we're going to work through it. And by the time the, the shutdown happened and we were forced to be around each other, <laughs> you know, 24-7, mm-hmm. we had very luckily worked through quite a lot of stuff and were, were sort of on the other side of a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, do the work. Uh, it definitely works. That's and right. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're, yeah, we are a good team. We, we've had a really good time together being here at home. She helps me out a lot. And yeah. So, so is she still teaching remotely this school year? She actually decided to not work this com- this school year. Mm-hmm. She, she gave up her job there at the Montessori school mm-hmm. um, to focus on, on our son. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, that's kind of a, a leap of faith for us you know, trying to make it, a, make a go of it in Los Angeles on one income. Um, Ooh, wow. But it's working out so far and cool. uh, taking it, you know, one day at a time. But my wife has uh, started to do some, uh, some private tutoring and oh, the students cool. from her school loved her very much. And so mm. there, there are some people who have already taken her up on that. And then she also has a, an Etsy shop where she makes handmade, organic and botanically dyed Montessori puzzle balls, uh, as well oh, as some fun. other Montessori materials. Um, are, have you ever seen the puzzle balls? They're <laughs> these really cool balls that are made out of, uh, looks like m- multiple tiny triangles all, uh-huh, all patched uh-huh. together. And they're, they're mm-hmm. made to help really young kids start to learn to grip things. And then, oh, um, fun. and then they're also, not all of them are like this, but the ones that my, my wife's been making, they actually come apart in three pieces, oh. hence the puzzle part of the name, right. uh, mm-hmm. and then can be put back together. So they're, they're useful for, for older kids as oh, well. Yeah. You'll have to send me the link for her Etsy shop for that. Okay, great. Yeah, I definitely will. Yes. It's, um, it's on it's on Etsy and it's called Growing Up Montessori. And they're they're just, I mean, obviously I'm biased, but they they are just gorgeous. And it's cool that they're organic and it's cool that they're they're dyed. She dyes them here at the house with uh, with organic berries and fruits and but they're just gorgeous. That's cool. Yeah, I'm really proud of her. Yeah, I, Barry worked at home. He worked for the city of Sierra Vista, so it wasn't so easy for him to do that. But he worked from home during the pandemic. And uh, in the middle of the semester, the spring semester in 2020, the college went to virtual. Mm. When, you know, right after in March, right after our spring yeah, break. Yeah. And so uh, Dave and I had to be really creative about, oh, okay, how are we going to do acting class virtually? Yeah, uh, right. That was difficult. And we had started the club, but we didn't get to finish the process of getting it official. And mm. so now we're starting it again. So did you have people do like their monologues on a, on a video screen or did it, that, that, that used, sort of thing? Mm-hmm, we used Zoom. Uh-huh. And we did that again. And I came up with the idea of having them do pantomimes to start with, because usually we start them off with improvs. Mm. Well, you can't really do that. Yeah. yeah. Tough, tough to yes and with the. Yeah, really. The it, yeah. it is. And so, and then we had them do monologues. And then we did have them do one like duo scene. And so trying to figure out how to how to make that work on Zoom, that was a challenge. But yeah, we it it worked out. And now uh, we're back to face to face on the acting class. I did decide that dramatic structure was going to be dramatic structure is all about the story. So we watch the movies, but we're talking about the elements of storytelling. We're talking about the plot character, Mm -hmm. you know. All of that and what, how you how you get to the theme, mm. which I learned from my dad. So 
so that one I decided to make virtual because Cochise College has a campus in Benson and it has one in Wilcox and it has one on Post up on Fort Huachuca and it has one. There's a downtown campus and there's the college campus in Sierra Vista and then there's one in Douglas, the original campus in Douglas. So I thought, well, you know, I think I'll try to expand my class, even though it is a required class for theater majors. So if I only have, you know, three or four students, it still goes because they have to take it to graduate. Mm -hmm. But so do you have people signing up then from, from the different areas? Yeah. I have four students who are all theater majors and one of them is in Douglas. You mentioned that going to virtual with the, with your class, the, um, one experience I had with that was uh, with my, I direct the choir at my church. And um, when the shutdown happened, we, we <gasps> thought, okay, let's try to do the virtual choir thing. Yeah. Um, so I send out these rehearsal tracks for the members of my choir mm-hmm. and then they record themselves just like this, but you know, with like photo mm-hmm. booth or with uh, they can, mm-hmm. you can even open up zoom and just record yourself. Mm-hmm. And then they'll send in, you know, a recording of themselves singing the harmony to mm-hmm you know, one of the songs, um, and then the video editor will, will patch them all together into this tiled effect and a sound guy kind of makes it sound like they're maybe kind of singing in the same room. And anyway, they adapted really, really well. It was, uh, and it was just so fun to get to see them, my choir singing together still. Um, yes, that's great. Yeah. We do what we do. What we have to do in the pandemic. That's right. Yes, we do. Well, that's so exciting. Well, Jonathan, this has been so much fun. I appreciate you you saying yes to talking to me. Yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, really fun to talk and hear some of your story as well. Well, I am so excited for you. It sounds like you've got this great growing career happening. So, yeah, God willing, <laughs> it's you know ups and downs in the freelance world, but yeah, uh, good good exciting things happening right now for yes. sure. Yes. For sure. Yes, I know. Yeah. yeah so please, uh, please go to the, you know, if people want to keep up with the podcast. It'd be amazing. And, and yeah, thank you for asking about my music um, as well. And people can look that up. And yeah, I really appreciate your generosity and uh, sharing, sharing some of that stuff as well. Thanks, Lucinda. Oh, yeah. I put it on the show notes on my website. Perfect. So yeah. And, and I like to put links so people cool. can go find out more about my guests and yeah. So if you have any other things, thoughts of things you want me to put on the show notes, let me know. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Really yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. So, I can't wait to share with people that, uh, that this, uh, that I got interviewed. Yes. It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. Someone wanted to talk to me. It's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I have one upcoming guest interview happening. I mean, I'm going to be the guest uh, nice. Very sometime Very soon. So, yeah, but I, I'm i used to being a teacher and asking the questions, so I don't know how that's going to go. <laughs> oh, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll be great. Oh, yeah, just, I hope just, so. just act like you're talking to your sister. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Do you have anything else you want to say? Um. Gosh, I don't know. Yeah, everyone have an awesome day. Oh, and, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> and keep reading good stories and looking for stories and all listening around to you good in music. And listen to keep listening to good music. And as we like to say at Nature Narratives, always be amazed. That's right. Oh good. I love that. <laughs> always be amazed. Yeah, because nature is quite amazing. It is. It is. Mm-hmm. And it just requires some some looking, you know. Sometimes it's hard to look. Hard I know. To, to really look. Well, we have bird uh, bird feeders in the backyard, and our favorites are the quail families. We love watching the quail families. Yeah, do they run around fast? Oh, my gosh. Around? Oh, yes, they do. Oh, oh yes. so fun. And uh, last year they had... Funny haircuts. Yes. Oh, I guess it was early this year. There was a family of like 12 or 14 little chicks that we've been watching grow up. And there are other families that only have two that we've been watching grow up, but it's been fun. Yeah. Very fun. That's great. Yeah. This has been awesome. Thanks so much again for, for having me. Thanks for agreeing. you 
enjoyed the show. If you like what you heard, please share it with a friend and give us a review on your favorite podcast app. It will help people find us. You'll find the show notes for this episode at my website, Sage Woman Chronicles at sagewoman.life. You can leave a comment there. And remember, as Philip Pullman said, after nourishment, shelter, and companionship, stories are the thing we need most in the world. Until next time, this is Lucinda Sage Midgordon. Thanks for listening.